now we uh, i will discuss how to design a stepanar using an example i took this example from the book uh, it is saying determine the design bearing strength at the end of a of the w1850 beam uh, shown in figure 627 will go the steel is grade 50 grade 50 is still that means yield stress is 50 ksi okay something again to recall that uh, when stepanar are provided we do not need to check for wave building wave crippling wave side sway buckling okay that is just to remind you so this is our um, this is our our example uh, figures so this is the section this section is w1850 again it is important to understand the problem otherwise very difficult to see the solution so this is the beam is a w1850 section and uh, the support the bearing plate is six we are providing a stiffener plate here three by eight inch thickness and width is three inch both side each side that means other side of this beam uh, that is the cross section so this is the section and this side one plate this plate is this and other side this this plate is again this now the section the properties are given k1 k1 is th uh, 13 over 16 and then the plate size is 3 inch see the 3 inch the width and thickness is 3 over 8 uh, everything is clear here the k is also given whatever the curve section here so the height of the plate height of the plate is 16.06 inch that means uh, this height this height how do we find the height total d minus k here minus k here that is the 16.06 it is given now this portion is not part of the example it is actually part of the solution so what we are doing here uh, once we insert the plate that means insert plate here and here then this plate is here this plate is here then some part of the wave will work with the plate uh, uh, as a column now how far should you consider it is 12 tw this should be 12 times whatever the thickness now i told it when i described the theory for in stepanar it is 12 tw if this stepanar is located inside a column uh, inside a beam say for example here inside that there in that case it will be 25 tw okay so uh, I think only this is part of the example. This is this should be part of the solution also. This should be part of the solution. So do not expect that in your exam you will get this. You will get this. You will just get this. That in this um, uh, in this beam we are inserting two two bearing plates on both sides. The dimension is this. What should be the capacity? That means what. What is the maximum load I can apply here? Now this thing, this figure, you will have to draw or you will have to figure it out. This one also. How to figure it out? Very simple for this section. Find the total D minus K here, minus K here, you will get this ace. Find K1 here, here, then you will find this length here to here, the plate, the plate distance, uh, width here, the effective that will be in bearing and find the 12 tw or 25 tw whatever is appropriate at the end it is 12 so this will be 12 tw okay now we will see more of this example so hopefully you understood the example at least okay now uh, we'll see the calculation so these are the parameters you find from asc manual table 1-1 one one. Uh, this should not be a problem for you so hopefully you know what is k uh, k1 tf bf everything is known to you by this time so alw alw is 12 tw 12 times 3.355 so this is this distance so this is 12 tw make sure you know it if the stiffener is located inside a beam not at the end then it is 25 in that case it will be 25 this time it is 12 why tw because tw is found from the ASC manual 0 0.355 355 that is 4.26 
and a is how to find d minus 2k so d is 18 minus 2k is 16 and that is shown uh, shown here so again this figure and this figure is not part of the example it is part of the solution okay now our challenge is to find the uh, find the i this table is asked to find the i the i and the total area so that is the challenging part for uh, for column uh, sorry for this stepnotated design so i will explain uh, um, on by on uh, how it, this figure came how this figure came or i can do in a separate uh, uh, figure I can show you also how these values are obtained okay so if I okay if I draw the um, that means what what I am drawing we need to find I of this section of this this, this, this section okay uh, mm, draw it I'm drawing a bigger way oh, I made a mistake at the beginning I Mm, it is like this so this is my uh, my section uh, wh what do I know I know this portion this is 4.26 inch uh, I know the thickness of the plate that is uh, 375 inch I know this size of the plate that is 3 inch do I know this Yes, I know this. That is three five five inch. So hopefully we know everything. Now how to find the I? I first they in your book in your book they define for they uh, separated stiffener plates. Stiffener plates area is two point two five. How area is two point two five? Come to this come to this uh, figure. Uh, this one and this one. What is the area? Multiply. 0.375 times 3 so 0.375 times 3 it is 1.125 times 2 why 2 because I have another uh, another one here so 2 so this way I got 2.25 so you learn uh, how I found 2.25 then moment of inertia of this 1.69 how it is 1.69 so the moment of inertia of this plate here how much is it B a cube by 12 okay b 0.375 times a is cube a is cube by 12 i found 0 0.84 8 375 times 2 1.688 that means 1.69 why times 2 because i have two plate one is here one is here so two plate so we found a moment of inertia here then we need to transfer it to here the com the combined combined uh, uh, combined centroid. So we need to find the distance d. Why it is one point six eight? Because it is from here to there. So this here to here is one point five half of three, and then half of the wave wave uh, thickness. So three divided by two plus point three five five divided by two. It is one point six eight. So that is one point one point six eight. Then a d square. Then finally this. Simply a, you know in my theory I told you how to do it for this one. So b a is cube by twelve. Um, then add a d square. Then multiply by two. Why? Because oh, another two is here. So to consider both, uh, multiply two. So b is this. So b b is this or b is here a c is here b s cube by twelve plus a d square a means only one and if I multiply two I'll get both this is also you got how I found uh, this eight point zero two now for wave wave means only this portion only this portion is my wave the centroid of this is here centroid of this is here that is the composite centroid so for this case I do not need to transfer. So what is the area of this? 4.26 times the, the thickness. Th what is thickness? Thickness is the, uh, 3. Point, um, oh, sorry. Thickness is here. That means we are considering this. So this is my B. Oh, first uh, we are considering the area. Let us check uh, whether 4.26 times this is 
uh, 4.26 times 0.355 is 1.51 so you learn how i found 1.51 that is just 4.26 times my my thickness now what is the i i will be about this axis so b that means 4 to 4.26 point 3.55 cube by 12 that will be the i b is cube by 12 let us check i am using my calculator and i found mm, 0 0.0159 that they found 0 0.0156 okay then write no need to transfer because uh, the centroid of this part and composite centroid is same the centroid here it is the composite centroid also so i do not need transfer do not transfer so i add it here then uh, if i add it my total moment of inertia 8.03 and total area is this then i can find my radius of gyration so hopefully you you, you understood uh, now if this uh, stephena is located inside a beam only difference will be here this will be 25 tw so in your exam you might expect this that your stephena is located inside so that will be 25 okay so hopefully you you, you know how to calculate r you you you, found, you you now saw it then we have to find our strength how to find we learn if kl by r is less than 25 or equal to 25 equation is this here what is our k k is again 0.75 for all stiffness it's 0.75 what is l l is the length of the column now here length of the stiffener what is the length that very small length from here to here why you were not considering because this is a huge section here the the column will column is considered only this portion this portion is our column uh, that is a thicker portion that uh, uh, that is mm, that will not be a, in a control position so this will be our control position so all uh, l is this which is total d minus k here minus k here okay so you know what is l and you know what is r let's go there yes so k known 0.75 always l you have to calculate r you calculate it you got 24 now most of the cases this ratio will be less than 25 for stiffener so if this is the case your capacity is this equation f e f y cross area what is the cross area the combined or composite area of the uh, of the section after inserting the plate 3.76 that is the gross area 3.76 let us check mm, yes 3.76 then you will get the keeps this is the capacity of this section now if your applied load is less than this good okay we should check another one that is bearing but this doesn't control so much still though we should say the capacity equation is this p 1.8 fy uh, a projected area in bearing how to calculate i told you earlier uh, again i am telling it projected area in bearing uh, so if i show you here So projected area, if I draw, uh, say, this is my column, sorry, this is my cross section, so there's a cup section here, so if I insert a plate uh, here, this portion will fail, this portion will be in, in, so not the curve section, not the curve section, deducting the curve, how can I find it, what about the width, or what is the width here, our width is here is 3 inch minus this portion is k1 so minus k1 times 2 why 2 one is here other one is other one is here this portion so we should consider this portion and this portion so times 2 because two side times my thickness length times thickness that is the projected area in bearing so we found here uh, see 2 is 2 side 3 by 8 is the thickness 3 minus this is the uh, that uh, bearing area the area is this after calculation now phi is change reaction factor it will be given in your book it changes with time uh, with time is with a uh, uh, revision of the standard so now it is 0 0.75 1 0.8 fy 50 whatever your material you find 1.10 so uh, this can take 110 kips and only by comprehension it can take 169 keep 
So that's so our capacity should be this one. Whatever is smaller, we will tell this this is our capacity. Now something else to check is the uh, weld uh, weld strength. What is that? So if I open uh, if I open this, okay, take a uh, new section. So my section is this. So cap section is here here. When I weld this plate here, whether my weld is good enough. Cap section is here. So I should check the weld capacity here. Now how to find? Now I am not uh, describing a lot. Thus, very briefly, the weld strength can be found using this equation 1.39 to dl. dl means the weld size, l means the length. Now, 1.39 will take care of the phi also and something else also. So, what is my d? d is whatever my, well, no, d is the weld size. We will discuss it later. First, say what is l. l is the uh, weld, weld length. What is that? Uh, weld length is here to here both side one side two side both side so this is why um, it is two ways two ways is a weld length now what is weld size weld size means when you do the weld your weld typically looks like this if you if, if you saw it says two plates is here and uh, the if you the weld is typically this whatever this size and say this side is 5 by 16 inch so d is this value if your world size is 3 by 16 inch, that means this dimension, your D is 3. So that is the D, uh, world size in 16 inch. So say D is 5 or 5 by 8 inch world. So whatever world, whatever your world size is. Say here they assume uh, their world size, oh, they did not find, they did not uh, assume it. They calculated what is the world size required. So our capacity is 110, 110, 1.392 DL. You know what is the, the length of the weld. Then for calculating, they found D is 2.46. That means they need a weld size of 2.46 over 16. So now two size uh, 2.46, that means they need, uh, now when we do the weld, we try to make this size and this size same equal it is easy so they need 2.246 uh, by 16 but it is difficult to tell people that apply yeah, like 2.46 better to tell 3 it is a um, nearest higher round number so what should be our weld size 3 by 16 or d is 3 that is a good um, good uh, design now here well, is our is not our main concern, but we made the uh, example complete so that uh, you know the you, you have the complete overview how to find strength for comprehension, how to find strength for bearing, and how to find design the well length. Now again, this equation uh, we will discuss, or if you get a chance, we'll discuss it in well design chapter. But simple, uh, very shortly, the capacity of a weld is this. It includes the fee also. So D means whatever the weld size uh, times uh, 16. That means if weld is 5 over 16, D is 5. What is L? The length. In this way, we can find the capacity. Now our capacity of the section is 110. And after calculating, we got D is 2.46. That means we need a 3 over 16. Uh, 2.46 is very difficult to provide, or very difficult to apply a weld with this. We will choose a higher number. Even 2.5 should be good, 2.75 should be good. But to be safe, because welding has so much, uh, so much uncertainty, there might be some hollow space inside the weld if the labor is not skilled. So we should provide three to be safe. Okay, so hopefully I completed this example, discuss it, everything of it. Um, so and I hope that you understood. But make sure uh, that. If the stepper is located inside the beam, you can do it. Only difference is here. This will be 25 TW. Every computation will be similar. So I will wrap up here. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you.